Surely guys, it's Kim, and I'm sorry for the bad quality of this video. Um, this is really a spur of the moment video because it's uh, the hashtag dare to be you thing that Tyler Oakley recently put up on his channel. And basically what it is, is it's his own, he wants uh, his viewers to send him videos of an experience, like a serious experience they went through, a weird experience, a weird thing about themselves, or just something that normally wouldn't come up in conversation. So I wanted to talk about something I went through that hasn't been uh, public knowledge. Only my a couple of my friends know and my family know about everything. And sorry, my new dog Ronald's stuck around my bed and he's gonna fall through the crack and I'm gonna laugh. This is him. He's a Pomeranian. I'm just gonna... Okay, as I was saying, um, I wanted to talk about something that isn't public knowledge, um, and that's about my anxiety disorder and my depression. My there to be you thing, hashtag thing, I don't know why I keep doing this. Um, basically, I wanted to talk about my experience in a psychiatric hospital. <sighs> yeah, I just said that. Okay. Okay, so um, it all started in sixth grade is when I really noticed how anxious I was and how overly worried I can get. Um, it was basically, um, there's these two teachers that were encore teachers, um, and I heard really bad things about them, and those really bad things scared me to no end, and I took all of them seriously, and I thought that I was going to have the worst time in their classrooms, and basically, I spent every night before their classes worrying and crying and shaking that I now know were anxiety attacks every single night. And my parents, after a while, started to realize, this isn't normal. This should not be happening to a sixth grader. Um, so my mom finally, after nights after nights after nights of all of this, uh, suggested that I would see a therapist uh, to talk things out and maybe get to the bottom of why I'm, like, crying my eyes out and shaking every night. So we went to a therapist, one that was um, a friend of my mom's, or my friend, a friend of my brother's, like, a band mom and my mom knew so I went in there and it was really all over my head it was really all sophisticated like things I didn't really understand because I was a sixth grader and she gave me packets to read and I was like how is this gonna help me it really isn't going to help me if I don't like reading I really won't like reading about something that could potentially be an illness for me but long story short uh, we switched to the therapist I am now and she's amazing and she's helped me through so much, and she's bliss. <laughs> so I had been uh, really anxious uh, for a long time. I was always just a kid that worried. But um, from sixth through eighth grade, my last year, my last school year since not summer, but um, I went the therapeutic horseback riding on and off. Um, my therapist was actually my trainer, if you want to call it that. Um, she was really, she's really great. I still, I still go to her, but she's really great. And I'm really glad that I have her as a therapist. But anyway, I experienced that my eighth grade year was a fairly sad one. And I had absolutely no idea why. I didn't know why I was so sad, like going to playlist live. That should have been like, you know, I should be like tear waterfalls and like screaming and everything. I mean, I was, but I didn't get that adrenaline rush you get when you get really happy. And I was really confused on why I didn't. Because I was like, I should be like really ha happy right now. And I'm not. And I don't know why. So um, I continued to get really sad. And then I hadn't been going to therapy since that previous March. So I didn't go for about a year and a month. And then that April or so, um, I talked to my mom like, Mom, I'm sad. And I'm not feeling my greatest. Can I go back to therapy? And she you know, didn't have any hesitation. Yeah, we can go. So I went back and she's like, so what brings the back here? <laughs> and I basically just spilled everything out and I was like, you know, I'm not happy. And I view everything as like, it's all going to end. I'm just a statistic. I'm going to die and it's not going to have any impact on anyone. And it's just like all these drastic things that I can't even control. And I was worrying about them. And that tends to be the problem with me because I worry about things I can't change. So over the course of um, my therapy, my first couple of therapy sessions, I worked up the courage to tell her that I had self-harm. And, um, it happened, like, three, two times, two times, and, um, I wasn't proud of it, but it, it was a compulsive thought in my mind that if I didn't do it, the voice just got louder. And I don't hear voices just, like, the constant, you know, 
do it, do it, it'll make you feel better, come on, just do it, um, ever since I did it that first time, and, um, that's some of my OCD symptoms, I don't have full-blown OCD, but I do have some symptoms when it comes to things being in a particular order, so I told her that, and the amount of courage it took to ask that, not only that, but to go back to therapy in the first place, it took so much courage to ask my mom, can I go back to therapy, and it took so much courage to tell my therapist, hey, I, you know, cut myself, that just, that was something, um, I never thought the time would come where I had to tell my parents that I self-harmed, but that time did come. One night when I got home from therapy, I still had a lot of homework to do, and homework and school in general, that's my main trigger for anxiety and all this sadness, it just, it got me really upset. So here I am with my dad on the kitchen table trying to figure out this one math problem because math is my mortal en enemy and I will never like it. And um, so I was trying to figure it out and then I just like burst into tears and he's like, why are you crying? It's just a math problem. And I just kind of exploded and I ran upstairs, slammed my door and hysterically cried for like a good half hour before my mom came up. But when I his say hysterically, I don't mean like, ha, ah, so funny, I'm laughing and crying at the same time. No, I meant like, I was constantly crying, like, I couldn't breathe, I was, it was terrible, it was terrible. Um, my mom came up, and she was like, you know, it's just a math problem, don't get so upset, but she was like, you know, it's just a math problem, don't get so worked up, but I just kept crying, she goes, what's the matter, and I said, everything, and um, she was like, what do you mean everything, and I said, school, schoolwork, school projects, people at school, the atmosphere, um, just everything, and, um, I continued to cry, and I was like, mom, I'm never happy at school, I'm never happy a lot, and I haven't been able to laugh and mean it for a while, and she was like, you know, I guess, I really don't know her feelings in that moment, but if I were a mom and heard that from my child, I'd probably be, like, ready to cry myself, but, um, she eventually pulled it out of me, that, and I told her that I had self-harmed, and I that at that very moment I felt like I was going to do it again really really soon like that night and um, then she asked me should we go to the emergency room and I said yeah probably because I could not trust myself so everybody at my house gathered up we went to the emergency room and um, I was there and like everybody had some physical problem and there I was with my emotional problem that I felt like I completely fixed by myself and I was I felt really like out of place and just hopeless really um but so they brought me back they took my uh blood pressure which really hurt they had like these electronic cuff things and like squeeze and squeeze Ugh. so after a while they put me into the pediatric er and they have really nice beds not gonna lie but i was seen by uh, multiple doctors and um social workers and basically what it came down to is i could do an inpatient thing where i go somewhere else and, um, like, stay there and uh, for the longest time as I need to get better. And, like, a psychologist would see me, and I would um, get better there and not have uh, electronic devices to use. I couldn't contact the outside world besides my parents. And um, I had really restrictive clothing. Like, I couldn't wear anything with hoods, zippers, strings, buttons, uh, no, like, tank tops like this, they all had to be, like, short sleeves or longer, no girls could wear shorts, they all had to be pants, no pockets, um, we couldn't wear shoes with laces or anything, they had to be either, like, sandals or we just had to wear socks, um, it was really restrictive, and I was not ready for that, but we could do that in inpatient thing, outpatient, where you go for the day and come back, um, a thing where, um, you could meet with somebody and talk, which is basically just another therapy thing, and I was already already on the list for a psychologist, so I didn't see any point in that. But um, so I took the inpatient thing, and I went uh, to a th a place two hours away from here. Um, yeah, and let me tell you, the hardest part about this whole thing was not being able to contact my family. Like I'm not one to get homesick at all, really. But watching my mom cry as I was driven away by an ambulance, that that hit me hard and not being able to see them every night before I went to bed and having to cry on phone calls every time I called them, that was that was really hard. You really don't know how much you love your parents and the people around you until you can't see them. And that was hard. 
anyway, my stay there was really unproductive. Um, I wouldn't, I don't say like every psychiatric hospital out there is really bad. I'm just saying the one I went to was absolutely terrible. I had a terrible experience. Um, they didn't contact my school, so my my school had no idea where I was. I wasn't getting schoolwork. Nothing was getting through. They didn't contact my parents when I arrived. I wasn't seeing my psychologist at all. I only saw her once. Only once out of the seven days I was there. Um, I was promised to see her every day. And I was pr uh, promised to be able to talk with her about an hour every day. Only happened once. Most of the people in my unit, which they uh, put the units depending on your age, not by your problem. So I was in a group of 11 to 15 year olds and a lot, a lot, a lot of them had anger problems, which I'm not hitting on anybody who has anger problems. It was just really new to me because I had, I didn't know how angry people could get until chairs and tables started being thrown down the hallways and that was really scary. And again, I'm not saying every psych psychiatric hospital is like this, but mine was, and that was terrifying. <laughs> Coming from someone who keeps everything inside to see people throwing furniture is scary. I did make some really good friends there, and we can't contact each other anymore because we're not allowed to give away social media or anything. But if they are watching, if any one of you people from the place I went to are watching, hopefully we can meet up again one day. Because I did make a couple friend new friends there, like my roommate and this other girl who didn't look like her age and she was absolutely so funny and this other girl who was not afraid to speak her mind and that was amazing. <sighs> I met some really good people there with some really good stories and I'm glad I went and if I went back in time and had the cho choice to change going there I wouldn't because of the people I met not because of my treatment if it was just solely on my treatment yes I would change to go somewhere else and actually get treated for what I had but I really enjoyed the kids there. The staff, not so much at all, not one bit, but the kids and their stories were amazing. So basically, I got discharged uh, about a week later. I left to go there on a uh, Tuesday and I got back on uh, Sunday, so like six, seven, no, just six days, yeah. Um, and they said it was the shortest time in there that they had seen ever from a kid. And I was really scared because I heard one guy was there for three months and I would have gone crazy if I was in there for three months. Um, I don't know how I did it. But, yeah. So I got out and I realized that I needed to get my act together and I couldn't be sad for the rest of my life. So they put me on a new medication there. Uh, the week prior to going to this uh, psychiatric hospital, I tried a, a new antidepressant. I had never swallowed pills before and it was really scary. And it made me really dizzy. I think it was just a lot of a new substance that really made my brain go. Um, but they tried a new mellow antidepressant and uh, helps me with anxiety. And I'm still taking it. And it uh, seems to be helping a little bit. Um, so that's good. And um, I still go to therapy. And I'm working on getting healthier and surrounding myself with better people. And trying new things and all that good stuff. So that's about where I am right now. Um, that was my story that nobody really knew about me except for my friends and my family. So there you guys go. I did not do this for attention. I did this solely because talking about um, problems of mine helped me relax about them and cope with them. And also for Tyler and for all you guys, if you're watching this, if he actually puts this in his video, um, I just want to say if you have gone through something similar or if you're going through something similar and you're refusing to talk about it with anybody, talk to your parents. But if they don't listen, talk to somebody at school. If they don't listen, talk to a friend. And hopefully those friends can get you some help because you can't do this by yourself as much as you'd like to think you can cope with this on yourself. You can't. And I've tried for the past three years and I, you can't. You can't do it by yourself. As much as you think to say that you do and you can do it by yourself, you can't. And Getting the first step to go to therapy or even just talk to someone is a good first step. And then building upon that, maybe going to an inpatient or outpatient or just going and getting the help you need is something that you should do because you need to get professional help if you're going through something like that. And no one should feel so down on themselves that they inflict pain on themselves or others or anything like that. So, yeah, that's my hashtag dare to be you for Tyler's contest. And if you 
experienced something similar, please leave a comment or message me. All my social media, all my social media mi- links will be down below. Um, so if you like to contact me or anything, you can. So that's about it. And I'll see you guys next time.